Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Welcome. Uh, how are you guys all doing today? Doing good? Awesome. Uh, my name is Kevin Jones. I work uh, for The Graph. I do DevRel, but I also help out with the Build Guild, and I support Scaffold ETH. Um, so the workshop here today is all about Scaffold ETH and, how, and why you really want to use it for building um, your dApp and why you want to especially use it for the hackathon. Um, so real quick, uh, basic TLDR for Scaffold ETH is it's basically a full stack um, toolkit that has everything you need to get set up and running. It comes with uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Kit, Next.js. It also comes with a chain, either um, Hard Hat uh, or Foundry. And it's pretty much uh, written with uh, React with Next.js and also like pretty much fully TypeScript. Um, so that's really nice because it has all the type safety stuff. Um, and uh, it's really easy to set up and it's a great starting point for hackathons. So without further ado, we're just going to kind of dive right into it. If you go to scaffoldeat.io, that will take you here and it will give you the installation instructions. You can either clone the repository or you can use the kind of uh, more modern way, which is to use the NPX. Uh, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure way to install it, which is what I would recommend. Uh, you do need to use that if you want to use Foundry. Uh, so that's what we're going to use. You also have access to the docs here, which is great. The docs are a really good resource. Um, we're going to dive into them a little bit. And there's also a GitHub repository that has more details, um, obviously, on the code and, and what you're actually using. But let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to copy the npx command. Uh, we're going to use that, and we're going to run it here. So npx create-eth at latest. And then it's going to ask you what you want to name it. So you can say whatever you want, abacadaba, hit enter. And then it's going to ask you what chain you want to use. So uh, you can choose hard hat, or you can choose foundry. Um, I personally like Hard Hat just because it's been around a little longer, but some people prefer Foundry because it uh, gives you the ability to do uh, smart contract tests with Solidity. So it's really up to you. Or you can do No Chain, which is also an option. Uh, I've seen people use it before. So we'll just say Hard Hat. And then it's going to go through and basically set up uh, the repository for you. Um, I've gone ahead and already did this because I'm just going to save some time. Um, and I've already did that into this Singapore directory. Uh, but basically, after it's done, it's going to tell you a few commands to get started. We're going to go through those right now. Um, uh, basically, with Scaffold ETH, you kind of need a few windows open because you need to like orchestrate. You need a back end, you need a front end, and then you need a, a, another window to do all of your deploys. So uh, the first one is to do Yarn Chain, which is the um, obviously the blockchain. The, you're simulating the blockchain with either Hardhat or Foundry. Um, I'm going to split my window up with Tmux, but you can just open up new windows if you want to do this. Um, and we can go into the same directory and do yarn start. So yarn chain is for your back end, hard hat or foundry. Yarn start is going to be Next.js, React uh, on port 3000. And then in this uh, third window is kind of where you do all of your deploys and like, you know, anything you want to do from the command line, right? So we're going to do a deploy. So we're going to do yarn deploy. So Scaffold ETH does come with a contract that's kind of a, a hello world greeter contract. We'll get to it in a second. But we can see here that we get some console output. We can see that we successfully deployed our contract. It gives us our address. It gives us the amount of gas that was used in the transaction. And then it gives us some, like, some console output as well that is uh, in the deploy script. Uh, but for the most part, we know that the, the contract has been deployed. Let's look at Scaffold ETH. So let's go up localhost 3000 and check, take a look at it. Um, it needs to compile the first time. So the first time is a little slow, but you can see here that it's compiling the root. Um, and then it'll pop up for you. Um, so when you first come into Scaffold ETH, you get this kind of like hello world page as well that says, okay, hey, you're connected. This is your address that's connected. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But Scaffold ETH comes with a burner wallet automatically out of the box too, which is really cool. But the secret sauce is actually here in this debug contracts tab. So the debug contracts tab, what it does is it, um, every time that you deploy your contract, the ABI gets generated and it automatically pulls in the ABI, and it automatically builds this UI out for you so that you can start toying with your contract in your front end without having to write any front end code, which is like super powerful because you, know, you don't wanna have to go in there and have to write everything just to test a function, right? Uh, when you do a deploy, it generates the ABI, and then it automatically um, builds a TypeScript file with the deployed contract in there, so with everything you need, yeah. Uh, so we see here we got everything that's in our contract, which is basically like a, a write function to set a greeting. So we have this greeting that's called building unstoppable apps. 
And then we have this function that allows us to update it. So I could say like uh, Singapore, like this. Oh, if I can type. Uh, and I could hit send. It's going to tell me I don't have enough to pay for gas. So you'll notice that we have this burner wallet. So I can actually just grab some funds from the faucet right here. And then I can hit send. And then I can propose, you know, that basically write that, write that transaction. And I've updated the state. So it's just a really easy way just to test your contract. It gives you a receipt and all that good stuff. So you can see what happened. There's also a block explorer. So you can actually go back in time and see like, okay, well, what happened? Well, here's where we did the contract creation. Here's where we did a, a faucet request and then here's where we set the greeting and we could click on it and we could see like any of the details about it in there so that's really useful um, but yeah so the debug contracts is really powerful and then again this this burner wallet we don't need to worry about connecting metamask or anything we can just get started right away and start toying around so uh, let's let's do that so let's load up the code real quick uh, so I'm going to use vs code and let's just kind of like try to build an app real quick so we have 25 minutes, uh, we're gonna try to build something and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how the uh, hooks and the components work and uh, that kind of stuff. So let's go here, okay. So we got the app, that's weird. I don't know why it's all green like that. Okay, um, that's a little concerning, but that's okay, we'll get there. Okay, so if we go to hard hat and we go to contracts, and we go to your contract. So if we'll notice there's a packages folder and there's two packages because it is a mono repo, right? So it has the hard hat, which is your chain and then Next.js, which is your front end. So in the hard hat directory, there's a contracts folder and then there's your contract.soul. So we can see here that we have uh, the smart contract and we have this ability to start making changes to the contract. We could come in here and say building cool apps. We could save it, come over here, do a deploy. Now, if we wanted to, we can do a deploy and then we can also force a deploy. So like, let's say you wanted to make sure we get a new instance of the contract, you can do dash dash reset and that will force the contract to get deployed. So we'll get a, a new address and you can see that every time that we do that, we get a new ad instance of the uh, contract and you can see it refreshes. And so now we see building cool apps and we get this new contract, right? So, um, you get in this kind of mode where you basically come in, make some changes, do a deploy, come back, test your changes, uh, and that's kind of like the life cycle. But let's let's actually build something. I also want to show off, like you might want to do another contract, right? So let's grab this uh, contract and let's just uh, paste it in here. Let's rename it. Let's call it uh, another contract, right? And let's just kind of gut it out a little bit. Let's just get rid of some of the stuff. We're just gonna go in here and get rid of a lot of the stuff that's in the other contract. Oop. We don't need this. Okay, we'll get rid of this constructor arguments as well. Get rid of this. We'll get rid of this modifier. Um, we'll change this to message.sender. You know, we're just doing some writing a new contract. Uh, so we have message.sender.call. So now we'll change this and we'll call it another contract. Like this. And we'll save that. So you'd think you could just come in here and deploy, but that's not going to work because you actually need to write a deploy script because we're using hard hat. Um, so if you look down below, there's a deploy folder. So what we can do is take this other deploy script, uh, copy it, and let's go ahead and paste it in there and let's rename it. So we're gonna do, do zero one underscore deploy another contract like this. And we're basically gonna come in here and, and replace everything. So again, there's already a, a deploy script for the existing contract, uh, whereas where we basically come in here and say, okay, let's use all of the named accounts from hard hat to deploy the contract. Uh, here we actually deploy the contract by calling a uh, deploy and we pass in the arguments, which is the, the deployer address. And then this is where we were doing this console log. So it's all, you know, just hard hat deploy. So my goal is to just take this and now deploy one for the another contract. So I've kind of copied that over here and I'm just going to like search for everything that says your contract in here. And I'm going to replace it with another contract like this. So basically we're just gonna go through the file and just create another deploy script. So now we have uh, the initial deploy script for your contract, now we have a deploy script for the, another contract, and I can save that, and then now deploy. 
And so now we have a second contract that was deployed. Oh, what did I do wrong? I think I need to uh, check the arguments because I was passing uh, an argument, is expecting something here. We can just get rid of that, save it, and then do a deploy. Yeah? Um, yeah, it, it goes in order. So like, like in this case, there's zero, zero, and then zero, one. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's going to deploy whatever. And I think we're getting an error because there's this console log. Let's get rid of that. Because uh, I was trying to call a function that is not in another contract. So now let's try it one more time. Oh. Deploy. This should be successful now. So there we go. So now we have two contracts that we deployed, right? Uh, so if we go to scaffold ETH, we'll see that that contract automatically appeared here. So we have the existing contract, which is here, which is that hello world contract with the greeting. And then we have this new contract that's kind of empty, right? So now we can start building in some functionality with this contract. Uh, so let's try to do that real quick. Um, and I'm going fast here, but just because I want to show you guys everything with scaffold ETH. So let's go to another contract. Let's, um, let's do a, uh, I don't know, an unsigned integer 256 counter, sure, total counter, and then let's create a function that allows us to increment that counter. So we'll do function uh, increment um, public, boom, and then we'll do uh, total counter plus plus, yeah. And then we can do uh, another one to uh, decrement. So we'll do uh, DC public, and we'll do total counter minus minus. I think that should work. Now let's try to deploy that. So we, you know, we're just kind of creating like a real basic contract. Uh, and so now if we see we have this variable called total counter, we should be able to increment it. There we go. And we should be able to decrement it. There we go. If we go all the way down below zero, we'll get an error because it's an unsigned integer. Um, so we can't go below zero because it's an unsigned integer. Um, but for the most part, we know, let's just pretend that this is what we built. Obviously, you should build a way cooler app. <laughs> but I'm just showing off how you can kind of get started. Um, so you've probably, you have a smart contract developer, and then you have a front-end developer. So now your front-end developer is going to take over and start building some stuff, right? So where you want to point your front-end developer at is the docs. And then you're going to want to point him at the components section which is all of the components that come in scaffold ETH. So there's one for like address for, that has ENS re resolution. There's a balance component, which gives you the balance of a contract address, and it will allow you to toggle back and forth between like the price in US dollars to ETH. Um, and then there's also an address input with ENS resolution in there. So there's a lot of cool stuff. We'll show it off here in a second. And all those are outlined here and how to implement those. We'll do that. And then there's also a section for interacting with your smart contracts. And this is all of the hooks. So let's say that you want to um, read from a smart contract or you want to write to your smart contract. There's a hook for that. So there's a read contract, which shows you how to read data. And then there's another one that shows you how to write data. So let's, let's try to go through and do some stuff right now. So first of all, I want to show the front end code a little bit. So we've, we've kind of messed around with hard hat and the contracts. You know how to deploy a contract probably at this point. Let's close hard hat for now. Let's go to Next.js. So we use Next.js uh, app router. So there's this app directory. And then inside there, there's a main page. And then there's all of the URLs that are available. So debug and block explorer. So we're going to use the main page. And the main page that you see with scaffold ETH is what we see here on this home directory, right? Let's just kind of gut this out and get rid of all of the boilerplate code here and save it. And we'll see that this kind of like goes away. It's going to blink out. There we go. So we want to build an app in here. Let's, let's close it, get rid of all this stuff that is not being used. Uh, we're going to use the address component, so we'll leave that there. Um, let's start out by first talking about, uh, so we use uh, Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. So if you go to daisyui.com and then you go to components, you can get a bunch of cool components for your app. So if your front end developer can just come in here and build whatever he wants. I'm gonna use uh, the card because it's just really clean. And I'm gonna take a card and just grab the JSX for it, copy it, and let's just paste it into our app. So let's save it and then let's see if it loads up. So we have this kind of like Nike shoe thing. Obviously, we're not going to sell any Nikes on chain, so we're going to get rid of that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm also going to wrap it in like another div because I want to center it and make it look a little better. So I'm going to get rid of this and ooh. okay. Then I got to center it exactly. Class name. Oh, what is this? What is going on? Okay. Uh, class name equals. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to do uh, a flex and uh, justify center. I think. Item center, I can't even remember. <laughs> you know what, this is like the worst part of writing dApps is dealing with CSS. Okay, cool, all right. And then we also want some padding, so let's do padding six, sure. There we go, get it off the top, looks a little better. Cool, shoes, we're not selling shoes. Let's talk about uh, what we can put here. So let's just show the connected address, right? So if, wh what you'll notice is that we use Wagney uh, to do uh, use account to grab the current connected account. And so we have access to that address variable that we create right here with this kind of uh, data that we get back. So we can save that, and you'll see it's really ugly. It does not look good. Uh, we don't want that in our, our DAP. We want to make some kind of like clean resolution. So what we could do instead is use the scaffolding component. So there is an address component. So we can say address, and then address equals, and then put that connected address here, and close it off. And then you'll see it automatically imported the address component from scaffold ETH for me. Um, and so if we go back there, we get this kind of nice, pretty um, address component where we have like the little copy button, which is really useful, and the little blocky dude, which is like a little avatar. Um, cool, we're running very low on time. Uh, five minutes? Oh, I thought I had 30 minutes, okay. So let's just pretend that we have this app that is kind of working. Um, we want to actually push it out and deploy it. Obviously, you're gonna front end developer is gonna do a lot more stuff. So he's gonna come in here and say, uh, okay, how to read to the contract and how to write to the contract. I wish I had time to get to that, but I don't. I only have five minutes. So let me take that and let's say we want to ship this to a test net. First, we need to generate a deployer account because we don't want to use the hard hat accounts because they're shared private keys. And we're, when you move into a test net or a public account, you don't want to use a, a shared private key. So we're going to do yarn run generate. This is going to generate a private and public key pair and then store it locally in the env file. Uh, and this will be a, an account that we can fund. Then you can run yarn account to fund that account. So if you run yarn account, it's going to give you the QR code for it. Uh, and then you can fund it. So I am going to fund this thing with some funds real quick. So I have some on my punk wallet. So I'm going to come on here and fund this. So there's a scan option on punk wallet where I can like scan with my wallet uh, with, with the camera. So I'm gonna grab that and then I'm gonna send some Sepolia ETH to that address. Let's see, I'll spend, I'll send 0 0.25, sure, why not send. Okay, so I just sent some Sapoli ETH from my phone to here. We should be able to yarn account and it will get me all the balances. So do, 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 do. Try it one more time. I think it went through. There we go, okay, so I have Sapoli ETH. So now, if, let's say I wanna take this smart contract and deploy it to Sapolia. I can either do yarn deploy dash dash network Sepolia, or I can update the hard hat config. I'm just gonna do this way because of time. Uh, so this is going to, oh, I do have more time, okay. <laughs> I thought I had more time, but I just wasn't 100% sure. Okay, cool. So I have until four, Three, 3.57, okay, cool. But as you can see, I deployed the app um, to the test net. And obviously it's got to deploy two contracts, right? So it's going through and proposing those transactions and then they were successfully deployed. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll show up next in the front end where we actually need to update scaffold ETH to point at that same network. So if we go here to the scaffold config.ts uh, inside of the Next.js folder, there's a place where you can adjust the chains to whatever you want. So the default obviously is hard hat because we're doing like local stuff. So if we come over here to scaffold ETH, it says hard hat. We can change this to Sepolia. So let's do Sepolia. And we might need to refresh. There we go. Okay, so you'll notice you get kicked out of the burner wallet, right? Because you don't really want to use a burner wallet for um, uh, a public network. 
Uh, you technically can turn it back on right here. So you could say like false and you could enable it if you wanted to and it will throw it back in there. Um, but obviously we don't recommend that. So let's just go ahead and do it true. And then um, we can just here, we can connect our wallet. So we can connect to MetaMask, next, confirm, switch network. So I was on Optimism, but now I just switched to Sepolia. And then now I have this ability to interact with the DAP. Um, so let's, uh, what else can we show off? Um, yeah, let's see here. Let, so let's, let's say we wanted to um, write, let, let's try to write to the contract actually. So what we'll do is we'll actually add a set greeting function here. So let's go to the scaffold ETH config. Let's go to use scaffold write contract. And you'll see the use scaffold write contract has this ability to write to the contract. So what we'll do is we'll take this button that we have which is here that says buy now. Uh, let's just get rid of this. And then let's just say uh, set greeting. Well, well, we'll update it anyways, but let's, let's just grab the code for it. So let's do write contract. We're gonna write to your contract. Uh, so we're gonna do that. And we need to import this. So if you click here and click quick fix, it will give you the option to import it. There we go. And then we will grab this button and we will just replace this button actually with that uh, and save that. We won't send any ether in the transaction, so we'll get rid of that, but we'll set the value to, I don't know, what should we do? Like, yo, what's up? Okay, so set greeting. So we're gonna call set greeting with just with this single button and we're gonna say set greeting to yo, what's up, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now let's go back to scaffold ETH and let's go to the home directory so now we have this button right here. Oh, let's also like read from the contract. Let's, uh, let's show the greeting is. So let's go to scaffold ETH. Let's go read contract. Uh, let's grab this one and let's go ahead and paste that here. Uh, we want to do use scaffold read contract, your contract and greeting. Yeah, I think we don't need to pass any arguments there. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's just get rid of that. We need to import this. Okay, import, cool. So now we have both of these, read and write. So now we should be able to get access to this. We don't wanna call it total counter, we'll call it current greeting. And let's display it right below the address. Current greeting. All right, there it is, building cool apps. Now I should be able to hit this button. It's gonna ask me to propose a transaction. I need to sign it, pay some gas, confirm. Da, 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 da. So obviously we're on a, a Sepolia, so it's a little slower than the local network, uh, but we should be able to, once this is successful, refresh and then we'll get the proper um, function. Oh, another thing too, is if you wanna verify your contract, you can just do yarn verify dash dash network Sepolia and we can verify the contract. There it is, yo, what's up? So it was successful. Uh, so we were able to build like a real basic dApp in this 25 minutes or whatever that we've been going. Um, so I may have time for, I have like five minutes for questions. So what questions do you guys have? Yeah, what about uh, the creation of packages? Like if, if a year goes by and some packages are deprecated and I use this WD again, I think you guys fix it? Like the working <laughs> set of packages? Yeah, yeah, I mean we maintain scaffoldies. So if packages change or move or you know, um, you know, VM needs to be updated or wag me or whatever. Yeah, we maintain it, yeah. Uh, there is a, uh, just so you guys know, there's an extension system for scaffolding. So if you go to the docs uh, and you go to extensions, we have a whole bunch of extensions. There's one for the graph um, that's really useful. So if you're gonna go for the graph bounty, you can do uh, dash E and then put in the GitHub URL of the extension or in this case, subgraph. Um, and so you could write an extension that uses the base of Scaffold ETH and then you just build on top of it with an extension. There's a whole section on how to create your own extension here. So that would be the way it'd probably go if you're just trying to do like features yeah. with using Scaffold ETH, then you do that. Good question. What other questions do you guys have? No more questions? Gotta be one more question. Come on. No? No? I saw something? No? Cool, all right, thank you guys so much. Good luck hacking, guys.